video. What is going on guys? It's your boy Sessler here with a video today. Bring us a Photoshop tutorial on how to create your very own cool one layer text effect, something around the title of that video. Um, text effect, text effect video here today. <laughs> okay, anyway, so in this video here today, I know personally for me, I love to try to show or figure out for myself at least when I do thumbnails and stuff like that. Really cool little text effect styles that are kind of really quick, simple and easy to do, like almost one touch, one click to get the actual process of the thumbnail to be super, super easy. Um, and I think this effect right here is personally the one I've been using for a few weeks or so for myself. I only personally figured out like there's literally you could put multiple layers in a layer style. I, I mean, I just I, I kind of just like canceled out the fact that there's a plus button next to the certain uh, layer styles that allow you to have multiple. What I mean by this, this thing right here, I didn't, for some reason I just like didn't even cross my mind. But I want to show you guys and present it to you guys and show you guys what you guys are able, uh, what you guys are able to do with using multiple drop shadows, uh, bevel and embossing. This really cool, dope, bolded 3D look that you can just do in one touch, one touch like if you want to change the font right if I want to change it to like this one right here it's pretty cool right and if I want to say hey I want to change this to a different one where it looks something like this let me see if I can change I never have a different style like this one right here right you can make these really cool very fast thumbnail sort of like uh, text effects in here so I mean like there's literally a bunch you can have a bunch of fun with it and I think it's something really cool that I want you guys how to do it's super simple as well and uh, let me just put this back to the one I had before which is like this one and uh, yeah I just want to get this thing going. So, of course, 200 likes on the video equals a series down below, which will most likely be the PSD of the video. That's what it usually is. I think today's going to be like a layer style. So, hit the 200 likes, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, let's go get this thing going. I'll talk to you guys in a second. All right, guys, so let's go get this thing on the road. So, what I personally have on my right hand side is all the settings that match the same thing you guys are looking at right here, right now. So, if you guys like what this looks like, and then of course, I'll show you guys how to change and what you guys would end up changing if you want to make things smaller. Blah, 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 all that color stuff would be, I'll just show you guys all along the way. But I want to make sure I get the right settings for you guys. That way it looks as close as possible to the original that I personally worked on, that I found the first, like, I guess, correct settings for my for my liking. Um, So yeah, let's go get this going. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this one right here for a second. Also, I think I, think I had this example here too, if you want to see this one. I think this is pretty cool too. I mean, like, it's it's all done with the same exact, of, uh, I guess, form format. There you go. And then, like, yeah, you kind of change it around. So... I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna just go ahead and simply clear the layer style, which is right here. So this is literally what it started off as, just a simple old layer style as in like this. And the color of this actual first plate does not matter. The font does not matter. Choose whatever font you guys want. If you guys wanted to know what font this was, this one is Burn, uh, Bernate, whatever. You guys can see it right here, right? Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, let's get this thing going. So I'm gonna personally double click on this to open up the layer styles. And the first thing I wanna make sure I do is I like, show all effects so I can make sure it's not uh show reset to default list there we go cool so what i want to go ahead and do is show you guys what i want to go ahead and start off with which is the uh gradient overlay this is how you're going to get your color i guess you would say so i'm going to do is firstly change this to normal blend mode put this opacity up to 100 percent and then select the color that i ended up using was this one right here this one has like this the most i guess uh uh highest sort of contrast over a dark color for me that, that also has a little bit of a hint of color in it which is like a, almost like a blue um so from the left hand side here i have hex code c4d2ea if you put that in the left code right here you'll get the same color that i have right here and press ok on the right hand side here i have b6 uh c2da you guys can go ahead and press ok after that and then this little midpoint here if you guys don't know what this is this sort of moves if i just change this color for a second something like this this sort of moves what color is the most favored or the most, uh, I guess, shown out of uh, the two colors that you guys pick. Or if you put multiple colors in, you can move them closer to get something like this almost, right? See how this one's gonna move this close? I'm gonna move this one super close to here. So you can get this really nice skinny line of um, a nice goldish color. So if you guys move the midpoint, that'll kind of uh, give you guys the guide of how much color wants to be shown. For me, I have mine pushed more towards the right hand side over here. And uh, I'm gonna press OK. And I'm gonna actually go ahead and make a new. Uh, layer right of the or of the same exact thing with the gradient overlay just click the plus button here right so above this one so this is the one on the bottom that we just did the plus one is gonna be the one we're gonna be changing the one that's above it and for this one i'm gonna change my blend mode to linear dodge add opacity 55 percent and the gradient is gonna be this one right here and this one gives me more of my my little bit of a color it'll when you guys change your colors around this will make more sense to you but for this one the hex code on the left hand side is uh, a, a 08080B on the right hand side is 081D24. So once you guys have that, you're pretty much good to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and look on this side over here to give you guys the first one, which I think it's just, is a, let's just start with the stroke really quick. And the stroke is very simple. I just have a one size stroke uh, position on the outside, uh, not on the inside, just because it, depending on the font, it might not look great, but on the outside being one uh, simple little pixel is gonna be enough to kind of show 
or almost like remove the front plate from all the stuff that we're gonna be doing in the back. You know what I mean? So for simply one size, outside position, blend mode normal, opacity 100%, and the color right here that I have is 64 CEFF. This is a nice simple little blue. Uh, press OK. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pretty much add, I think, the inner glow, which is pretty simple as well. So for the inner glow here, I have opacity 36, uh, zero noise. The color that I have chosen here is basically what I ended up doing, by the way, was to get this color here. So let's just say if you're using a different color as your gradient here, let's say you choose like an orange to a yellow. Okay, well, what you can simply do is just click on this right here, like click on the the actual plate, the front plate of the color, whatever color your, yours happen to be, and you're gonna get somewhere around here, wherever you are, whatever. I would just simply move it up towards the white, but like right here is where it was. This is where the white is, right? So all the way in the top left is white. I would go somewhere in the middle, right? That's just gonna give you the best, I guess, color of uh, contrast or the best brightness, I guess you would say, a nice lighter tone with the blend mode being on linear dodge add. Opacity is gonna put it at 40 so it can be kind of even, right? And uh, when you guys get that, you guys will see if I turn it on and off, you guys will see this nice little plate of like, it just glows and it looks really, really good. And I personally think if you guys would add this, it just makes it 10 times better. So the technique is softer, of course, source is on edge, choke is on zero, size is on 5%, range is on 30, and you're good on the default contour. And once you guys have that, I believe I would go with the outer glow. I mean, after I probably, I'll do the inner shadow first. Um, so for the inner shadow here, I'm just gonna click on it just like so. Okay, now for the inner shadow, it's almost the same exact thing that I end up doing for the inner glow. Okay, for this one here, I have the hex code ACB9CD. And basically, if you guys wanna know what I did, I did the same thing, click on the plate, get, went between my uh, white and my original color choice. Uh, gives me the best sort of contour, like I said, the contrast to it, right? Opacity just put on 60% for now. Distance on three, choke on zero, size on five. And that'll give you guys this nice sort of little, sort of, I don't know how to explain it. But given as well, my angle is 135 and not 90%. Um, if you have use global light on, turn that off for every single thing you end up doing. Because uh, what's going to happen if you change one thing, everything that has use global light uh, enabled will change as well. And you guys will get a really weird sort of like, like why does this not look like what I just did before kind of thing. So make sure you guys turn this off um, for all your layer styles. It's going to be a little bit awkward. So once you go with your inner glow or your inner shadow, excuse me, you can see it kind of like shows on my angle. If I put it on this side, you'll see it, it more favors this side but I have it on 135 or so, right? So it's more lenient towards the left-hand side. I'm um, giving you a nice, this little sort of contrast, like light that's coming in, which kind of gives that 3D effect as well. And uh, now with the inner shadow being done, I'm gonna go ahead, I, th I guess I can start on, I kind of want to leave the, the bevel and end boss to the end because it kind of does this really cool effect that you get to see what happens. So I'm going to actually start off and go ahead and do the first drop shadow. So for the first drop shadow, I have my settings being this 100%, this is at six, uh, 100 spread size at seven and all that good. So that's the, this is the first actual go ahead on the drop shadows So really quickly, I want to show you guys. Okay Um, the hex code by the way for this blue is 0 d2 a 4 2 So okay really quickly the spread and why this kind of works the way it does I'm gonna change this color for a second Okay, so why this works the way it does if I didn't put my spread all the way up Okay, what happens is you're gonna get this sort of like uh more something like this where it looks like the original drop shadow itself but since the spread itself, you kind of like suggesting that when you have spread being on a lower uh, percentage here, you're going to sort of like understand that this is being very, very close to this middle here. When you put the spread out, it of course goes more towards the edge, which means these feathering that's going on here is going to just get a little more like, I guess, heavier and more sharper and of course more solid. So turning this up kind of gives you guys that sort of solid shape that you're looking for, uh, shape, excuse me. And if you guys kind of mess around with your distance and stuff, but, but I'm gonna keep the same settings I personally had, but if you guys mess around with your settings and such, right, you can kind of get this really cool look. You, you can move this more towards this way. I'm at 90% uh, angle right now. If you wanna move the angle around, if, you're, if your sort of font kind of heavily shifts towards the left, maybe you wanna put the drop shadow towards the left and not the right-hand side or doing the straight down the middle, right? So think about that when you look at the font. If you go, it kind of looks really weird, maybe change the angle of all of your drop shadows when you do them as well. You can do it really quickly by just changing all four or five of them, right? But for me, I think this sort of angle right here being like at 75 or so looks really, really good. So I'm gonna keep and go on with that personally. And the settings, like I said before, were six, 100 spread and my size was on seven. Okay, so that's my first actual drop shot on this color right here is the color that I had. Um, 
Okay, I'm gonna press okay for a second to make sure I kind of save what I have going on so far. Uh, if not, if you guys exit it, if you press cancel, something like that, and you guys didn't realize you changed all those settings, you're gonna get rid of it. Um, before as well, I, I, before I finish as well, if I, before I forget, excuse me, if you guys go to your styles and click on new style, this is where you guys would save your progress in a way or save your styles, your layer styles in this case. Um, so that if you click on them, you guys can get these really, the same exact one as before. You know what I mean? So they're really quick. I'll show you guys in a second. You guys told me how I did it before, but I'll show you guys in a second as well. But that's the first drop shadow. The second drop shadow here, I'm going to go ahead and move this over here because I need this color right here. So the second drop shadow, if you guys just want to press the plus button, you're always going to be changing the one that's on, I believe, below it. So this one right here is the same thing as this one. So you guys want to make sure you change every time you press the plus button, the one that's below it. So you want to keep the top one the same, the bottom one's going to be different, and the, for the bottom one, the size is going to be 18 here. Uh, the spread is going to be at 100% all the time, and your si or size is on 12, okay? And the co uh, color that I have here is right here. So I'm going to press OK for a second. So you can see automatically you're getting this really cool sort of like plate that looks like i said almost like in a 3d right you kind of see this color right here you have a nice little shorter um i, I guess a darker color in the shade that's in the front right and then you have an even darker color on the like at the bottom of that to kind of say hey this is the plate here i think that's really, really cool um so personally this might be enough for a lot of you guys if you guys want to stop here that's perfectly fine but i like to be a little more i don't know like methodical and kind of add more and sometimes less is more but for me i kind of like for this it kind of looks cool when you guys add a little more layers a little more thickness almost looks like a like a like a trident layer that's kind of what i had in my mind um the trident layer gum if you guys you know i don't know whatever um okay so that's the second uh drop shadow here for the third one here right make a new one always use the bottom one to change if you guys change the top one you're going to be confused because it's going to change the one that's above it and we're always going to be changing the distance uh to a higher number so that means it's going to be further away from the center which means it's going to of course be over this black or this darker color here um i don't know if i said the dark color which one is 06141f is the second color of the drop shadow we use <laughs> excuse me for the third color here i'm going to be choosing this purple here and this purple can be changed to any color you guys want. Even for me, I'm just going to change it for this video. I'm going to make it like a nice yellow this time. Hex code E5C843. Press OK. <coughs> Excuse me. This is at 75 again. I'm going to uncheck the use global light and change it to 75 again. Make sure you do this for every single one because you'll see it, it will mess with you a little bit. I didn't realize that I had it checked on. Uh, okay. So for this third one, the size is at 20. The uh, spread is always at 100%, like I said before. And for this one, it's going to stay on 12 uh, size as well. So all I pretty much did for this is change the distance to give me a, this really simple little kind of hint of color, which really helped kind of separate and also, also kind of insert color in the actual text effect itself. Um, so we have this nice little color here. And this yellow looks really, really nice in this purple. If you guys want to, of course, you want to make the yellow be more prominent, you guys just want to put the distance up just like so. But for me, I think 22 might actually, 21 might actually be pretty good too. I'll leave it right there. So that's our third drop shadow. For our fourth one here, we're going to be using the fourth color, which is right here. And so double click on the drop shadow, pressing the plus button, always changing one on the bottom. And the color is going to be changed to this one right here. The hex code is 040E17. Okay. You get a nice little sort of darker blue too. I'm, I'm pretty much working with all these darker blue colors that are not just basically black and kind of like boring in that sense of color shading, right? Kind of add a little more finesse to it. Um, so for this one, the size is at 18, or excuse me, distance is at 18, size is at 17 actually, and your spread is at 100% and opacity 100, please. Press OK. So you can see what happens here. It kind of gives me like this really simple little bit more of a, a kind of like a cushion, like right, kind of have this little layer, little action here. For me personally though, I think, th mm, I think this needs to be like changed to like a different angle. I wouldn't want to. I mean, maybe it's my distance. Let me change the distance a little bit. Maybe my distance for this one is going to be around 20 or so. I don't, I don't like, I don't know if I uh, like how it looked just in that little 18%. I'm going to put it at 20. I think it looks pretty good as well. Okay, so that's our third little layer. So you can see this little trident gum action going on. So for the last actual drop shadow here, which is number five, we're going to make a new layer once again, which is the one on the bottom. I already added it, just to make sure I get over here to this color. I'm going to change it to this color right here, which is a nice, basically, it's almost black. It's just quite not there. To the normal eye, we're not going to notice it unless you put it up below a black. Um, is hex code 010407. So that's the last color here. I'm going to double click on this again. So for this last color here, the size is going to be on 22% distance. Excuse me, the distance 22%. But since I changed the distance of this one too, I'm going to change this one to distance too as well. Okay. 
and then my go ahead on the size 17 spread is at 100 percent this uh, angles at the same exact angles all the other ones and opacity of course at 100 percent i'm gonna press okay for a second and you can see that last one kind of just says hey i'm gonna hold all these colors together with the darkest color um in this entire palette and it's gonna look really really sick and we're not quite done yet we have one more little thing to change which happens to be the bevel and emboss i left that for last because i think it adds the littlest beautifulest touch ever and for this i'm gonna double click again bevel and emboss and these settings that i have here i'm gonna put at 500 depth my size is at two just like so my angle is at 75 and my altitude is on 30 percent which is correct right um highlight mode is on screen multiply is on or excuse me shadow mode is on multiply and this color here is basically i think the second color we chose from before uh just basically the darkest color that you have in the middle here like or not the darkest but i guess the middle tone darkest color that you guys have which is this one for me hex code 0d2 a42 press ok press ok again you can see it just simply adds this really 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 dope just very little simple finesse around these little edges here that kind of really pulls the actual color or i guess the uh the, the original front plate out and it makes it look super 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 dope um really really cool if i actually want to as well i might make the multiply color darker you can get it to be more a little more sharp i guess you would say if you made it darker or moved it a little further down i think it looks pretty good too uh but yeah i think that would be it. this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven i believe it was eleven um okay ta-da we're done so let's just say for your instance you're gonna be like okay i done the action i did it once i spent an hour on it whatever you end up doing you want to go to styles you want to go to new style and you want to name it whatever you guys want to name it i don't think you're not gonna be able to see the name really honestly but just for the sake of naming it just name it right you can name a tutorial and then what you guys would do, let's just say you have no style on right now. You make the, you make your, your, how do you say your, uh, we'll just do this text effects, right? You're making your thumbnail. You're like, I'm about to make the sickest thumbnail ever. I got two minutes. How the heck do I do it? You guys can go ahead and be like, uh, let's just do this, right? Just for now, right? You can say text effect. Cool. Go here. New styles. I want to use this one for the top and then effects. Let's just say, go boom. This one, I'll do the same way I did for this one boom done you know what i mean and then you add your little text effect if you want to make this smaller let's just say oh man dude i want to change the color of this the way you change your uh colors and you might mess around your colors um is you go into the color overlay so the one on the bottom is the main color the one on the top is sort of this nice little sort of glossy-ish uh like a, a finish right so the one on the bottom here you just want to change the colors to whatever you guys want to change to i can just change it to oh wait what the heck that looked kind of badass dang it i don't know how i did that whatever um okay anyway like orange or let's just do like an orange like this okay that looks pretty cool already but like i'm gonna go ahead and just change a nice to a yellow a nice little yellow all right something like this now the reason why you can see only a little bit of yellow is just this this the midpoint is too far off so i'm gonna move this over here press okay now let's say i don't like this yellow uh, outline stroke here i can change this to yellow uh, blue excuse me i'm gonna change this to yellow then you can say okay i'm gonna have to also change the uh, uh outer glow right there change that to a nice little yellowish tone and then you can go ahead and say that's pretty much it right yeah so there you go you guys can change your colors all that cool stuff as well and a little quick tip if you guys are doing it for thumbnails make a new layer take a brush take a nice sort of darker tone color to the orange that's already there then you want to go into it again move it even further down okay do uh, click once right on the top top of the text change your blend mode from normal to linear dodge add and you want to lower your opacity down a little bit and you can get this really nice cool little glow in here as well Right now, let's just say if you didn't like the color that you chose and you think it looks a little bit too off, you guys know what I mean. You press Control U on your keyboard on that same little glow layer that we're calling it, right? And you can just change your master hue all the way over here. You can say, hey, I like this better. I want you to lighten this a little bit more. And you can give yourself, your text effect itself, a nice little glowy thumbnail look to it. And I think that would be the end of the video for me personally. So. I hope you guys enjoyed. I want to explain it as much as I can because I know for the I know for a fact that you guys out there who are doing thumbnails and stuff like that are gonna love this and you're gonna love the fact that you can do this stuff really really quickly. Not very difficult. It's just one quick little sort of like I guess well not one the quick one but one longer sort of tone of, of of working at a layer style effect. Then you guys go ahead and just use and change around very simply by just changing your distance and stuff like that really quickly as well if you guys want to go ahead and just, of course make things bigger um or smaller whatever you guys can multiply it by two in the distance so you can do like hey 12 for six here right 36 uh 42 oops 42 40 
by going all the way down and this is 48 right i think okay i uh, press okay and you can make the distance even like even more right almost like kind of like an extrude so that is how you would change it you just double the amount of your distance when you guys finish of your drop shadows and you get this better look where it's more sort of 3d and uh longer or more depth i guess you would say so that is it i hope you guys enjoyed today's video of course leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed um i think i said that already i think i don't know but i love you guys i appreciate you guys and i hope you guys see you i see you next week or you know just come back if you guys are not subscribed make sure you guys subscribe already and uh yeah i'll talk to you guys later set some hq out do not keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys later much love i hope you guys enjoy your weekend all that good stuff peace